Don't you want to know for sure that it's bad before you lay out your money to put a new one in? And allowing the flow to throw flute through the flow. If you see this sensor fluctuating at the same rate as this sensor, then your catalytic converter is not working. Good day, folks. It's DIY Guy123 here, bringing you another do it yourself video. Today, we're going to talk about many ways to troubleshoot catalytic converters. Oftentimes when you run a test, if the test is not quite a clear answer, it's helpful to have another method to try to diagnose an issue. So with catalytic converters, there are several methods to troubleshoot. And before we get into how to troubleshoot those catalytic converter issues, let's talk about where the catalytic converter fits within the exhaust system. So here we have an engine block for a car. This is the front of the engine or the front of the vehicle. Now, if we have on the sides of the exhaust, the block we have bolted the exhaust manifold and it connects down to the catalytic converter and then there's an exhaust pipe that connects to a resonator and then an exhaust pipe that connects to a muffler and then the tailpipe. Now some vehicles the resonator and the muffler are in the reverse position. Some vehicles have more catalytic converters than what I've shown here. I think you can even have four per vehicle if it's a really fancy dancy vehicle. There are different configurations, but these are the main pieces. Now what do they do? Well, the exhaust manifold takes all the gases from all the cylinders, exhaust ports on one side of the engine, groups them together, and all the exhaust gases flow into the catalytic converter. And the catalytic converter converts the toxic gases that come out of the engine to less toxic gases that head downstream. So now we have the converted gases heading down in this direction to the resonator. When those sounds go through the pipe, they don't really cancel each other out. But when they go through the resonator, some of the sounds are sort of, you can think in the terms of equal and opposite, and you add them together, they cancel each other. It's a very basic explanation, but some of the sounds are canceled out as, they, as the gases flow through the resonator. It sort of shapes the sound, you might say and then the gases travel down to the muffler, and the muffler has a bunch of restrictive ports in there. The gas will go around a corner and back through a corner and through some wire mesh, and sometimes through some insulating, it's called packing, and all of that effort will cause the amplitude of the sound or the volume of the sound to diminish. Then finally, the exhaust goes out the tailpipe. And here's a fairly short tailpipe coming out of a 2012 Mustang GT. And here's a longer tailpipe that comes out the back of a muffler on this pickup truck. Now that we know what all the major components are, let's talk about the exhaust gases and the information we're gonna to need to troubleshoot them. We have sensor one, which is in front of the catalytic converter, and sensor two, which is either in the catalytic converter or behind the catalytic converter. And these two sensors will detect the difference in the oxygen content of the exhaust gases flowing here and here. And the difference between those readings indicate how well the catalytic converter is functioning. So we'll get into that in a minute, why that's important. I do want to talk about bank one versus bank two. A bank refers to a side of an engine that has one exhaust manifold on the driver's side, that's traditionally called bank one, and on the passenger side, that's traditionally called bank two. So you have bank one and bank two, and then for each bank, for a V8, for example, usually you have a sensor up in front of the catalytic converter and behind the catalytic converter. So you have bank one, sensor one, bank one, sensor two, bank two, sensor one, bank two, sensor two. There are many symptoms of a bad catalytic converter. You could have misfires, you could have shaking of the engine due to misfires, so you hear it or you can see a shaking. Fuel economy could suddenly become poor. The biggest thing that people are gonna notice though is reduced power, especially at high RPM and especially under load. So if you were towing a trailer or doing something heavy, you know, heavy work, doing heavy work with the truck or vehicle, and now it's all of a sudden down on power, that's a good symptom to require you to investigate your catalytic converter. In addition to loss of power, the loss of power you'll notice at first at high RPM when the flow rate is very high, but then gradually at medium RPM and even low RPM, you'll start to see performance issues. You might even get a situation where the vehicle just won't rev beyond a certain RPM. It won't rev over 2,500 RPM, even in neutral with your foot on the floor, stuff like that. 
Then you'll get a situation, even if it's even worse, where it won't start when it's hot, and then it will eventually not start when it's cold. So hopefully you don't wait until that state before you investigate it. One of the interesting symptoms that my buddy heard from his vehicle was a whistle and or a, a really high pitched sound. And he said, I thought it was an idler pulley, but he checked that and ruled that out. Then he thought, well, if it's not that, it must be another belt that's running the air conditioner. So he disconnected the air conditioner belt. Wasn't that, he was worried it was even in the transmission. It was such a high pitched bearing sound. He said it's not in the engine, but anyway, in the end, what it was, was the pressure had built up so high in his exhaust system, it blew out his exhaust manifold gaskets between the manifold and the block, and it was making a whistling sound. So that's yet another symptom. Okay, so now we've come across symptoms that we feel are catalytic converter related or could be. You wanna try and diagnose, is it the catalytic converter? First thing you wanna do is fix all leaks in the exhaust system. I know it seems counterintuitive, but you really, you don't know what you're dealing with until you have all of the leaks fixed. If you have a leak in your exhaust system, especially if it's before the O2 sensors, it screws up the O2 sensor readings and then the engine will work strangely. It could have various symptoms of, same as for a catalytic converter. So fix all your exhaust leaks. Second thing, use a laser thermometer after the vehicle's been run for a while, it's up to operating temperature. I wouldn't even say idling, like drive it on the road, you know, a couple thousand RPM at least for five minutes or so to get the thing quite hot. Once it's hot, get underneath it safely and use a laser thermometer to measure the weld ring at the front of the catalytic converter and compare it to the temperature at the back of the catalytic converter. A catalytic converter doesn't start to catalyze or perform the chemical reaction or it doesn't work efficiently until it's at least 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So you wanna make sure that the temperature is at least that high on the input of the catalytic converter. Then as the catalytic converter is doing its job, it's actually generating heat through this chemical reaction. So the temperature at the output of the catalytic converter should be higher than on the input. If it's anywhere up to 150 degrees Fahrenheit higher on the output than the input, that's good. If it's more than 150 degrees Delta, then it suggests that the work that the catalytic converter is doing is extremely high. It may suggest you have an emissions problem with your engine. So you want the output to be hotter, but not like too, too hot, right? Not more than say 150 degrees Fahrenheit. All these numbers are sort of this approximately. All right, so normal temperature of the CAD is 350 to 1200, for example. The thing to watch out for is if you see a temperature over 1600 degrees Fahrenheit, that is the temperature at which your internals may collapse. They may start to melt and the efficiency of the converter reduces and the resistance, the resistance to the flow will increase. So, you know, if you see anything hot like 1600 or over, absolutely you've got a problem possibly too high emissions coming out of the engine, and that may have destroyed your catalytic converter. If you see temperatures like much higher than 1600, uh, not only will the physical uh, medium collapse, but the precious metals that are responsible for the chemistry that happens in a catalytic converter, those precious metals will be damaged or eroded, and the efficiency of your catalytic converter will be reduced. Okay, so you're underneath the truck here, and here is the downstream O2 sensor. And the upstream is somewhere up there. I can't see it, it's probably in the exhaust manifold. And here's the cat. You wanna measure right at that weld mark right there. And the same thing on the input side. What do we got? We've got 413 degrees Fahrenheit. Hope the camera can get that. And on the input, we've got 272 degrees Fahrenheit. So that tells us that the cat is actually working. Since you're under the vehicle, and this might be a test you'd need to do when the catalytic converter has cooled, but if you take a rubber mallet and you whack the side of the converter or basically the bottom of the converter, when I say whack it, you're not trying to dent it or dislodge it from the vehicle, but you are trying to give it a very firm whack. And if you hear any rattling inside the converter, I don't mean a heat shield, but an inside, or you hear any like loose material inside, that's a problem that the inside honeycomb structure has failed and it's very likely caused a blockage. Now, the honeycomb, the holes are all in one direction, allowing the flow to throw flute through the flow, the exhaust gas to flow through the holes. But imagine if that broke, a piece of that broke and turned 90 degrees, and now the flow cannot easily go through those holes, you have a restriction in the catalytic converter. Third way is if you look at the converter, and this probably is only gonna work in areas where you're not 
in a environment that uses salt in the winter because as soon as a catalytic converter is completely rusted, you, this doesn't work. But if it's not rusted and you see the original outer surface of the non-corroded surface of the catalytic converter, if you notice that there's a bluey tinge to it, it may have overheated and it may not be effective anymore. Four, okay, now we're to the stage where we're like, okay, we think there's not just a failure of the converter, but a blockage somewhere, somewhere in the exhaust system. So the brute force way to do this is to disconnect the catalytic converter where it connects to the exhaust manifold, start the engine, even drive down the street and see if your restriction has, well, the restriction would have gone away if you do that, but has your performance restored? Like if you couldn't rev over 2000 RPM before and then you disconnect your cat from your exhaust manifolds and now you can rev up past 2000 RPM, you know that there's a blockage downstream of the input to the cat. Maybe it's the cat, maybe it's the resonator, maybe it's the muffler, could be on the pipe along the way. So if you did find a, uh, an improvement by disconnecting the cat to the exhaust manifold, put that back together and now disconnect the cat to the resonator and retest. And if that doesn't work or it doesn't fix the issue, reconnect the resonator to the cat and disconnect the resonator to the muffler and see if that restores the problem. And that's the way for dividing and conquering and isolating the blocked uh, the block component of the exhaust system. Now, if you don't want to take apart those sections of the exhaust, I can appreciate that. Maybe your exhaust nuts and bolts are rusty and you don't want to replace a gasket, I get it. The other option, if they'll come out, is remove the oxygen sensor that's upstream of your catalytic converter. If you can get at it, if it's not too rusty, take it out and redo the test. Then put it back in and then take out the, exhaust, the uh, oxygen sensor that's after the catalytic converter and see if that helps. Finally, if none of that's a good idea for you, you can actually drill a hole in the front of the cat, behind the cat, behind the resonator, between the muffler, small hole. And there are pressure gauges that you can buy that will measure the exhaust pressure. And if you see a significant pressure differential, like if it's much higher in front of the cat than in the back of the cat, you know that the cat's blocked. If it's pretty much the same pressure front and back of the cat, then the cat's not blocked. Uh, so you can do those tests between the uh, cat and resonator and resonator muffler. When you're done that, you either have to weld up the hole or if you don't have a welder, you can put a self-tapping screw in there and it's probably never gonna back out and probably will never leak. Okay, so now we're getting into the kind of fancier ways of looking at this. The scan tools themselves, I use an X-Tool brand of scanner, uh, an IP819, love it great rig i've got to check my channel i've got tons of videos on how to use it for a variety of things you can use a scan tool to check to see if there are any codes now the engine codes related to catalytic converters are p0420 all the way to p0424 or p430 up to p434 and so if you have codes in there they all indicate an issue with the cat it doesn't mean that the cat is responsible but there's some pro the catalytic converter is suggesting there's some kind of a problem. Uh, through, and that's all through the oxygen sensors. Those, you know, those readings are, um, or those P codes are identified by performance of the oxygen sensor, which is all related to the cat. Number six, if you have a live scan like the x 2 ip 819 monitor the O2 sensor readings in front of the cat and behind the cat. Now, in front of the cat, the chemistry of the exhaust gas is changing rapidly because it's coming out of the engine, you're pressing the gas, you're letting off the gas, there's under load, there's no load. So the output of this sensor is gonna rapidly fluctuate between zero and one volt. It really should be about 0 0.05 volts up to 0.8. That's kind of the normal range, but anyway, in general terms, zero to one volt, and it should be fluctuating quite rapidly. The sensor after the catalytic converter, it should not be fluctuating because the catalytic converter is doing its job and stabilizing those gases and it should have a much more stable reading and that reading should be fairly stable stable around half of a volt there is some minor you know variance as load comes and goes on the engine that kind of thing. overall it should be fairly stable if you see this sensor fluctuating at the same rate as this sensor then your catalytic converter is not working there's no reduction in the chemistry or no change in the chemistry and the gas is flowing through. So that's a dead giveaway 
that this cat is not working. Okay, so here we are at idle. We've been idling for about five minutes. The engine's warmed up. And you can see the upstream sensors fluctuate pretty rapidly between, oh, 100 millivolts and 800 millivolts. So that's what they're dancing around up and down there. And then downstream of the cat, it's pretty stable. And so what does that tell us? It tells us that the cat is functioning properly and it's smoothing out the oxygen level in the exhaust. The next test you can do, and this is test number seven, is you can remove the cat and visually look through them. Now, this is kind of the hardest because it means you sometimes have to cut a pipe or you'd have to do a lot of unbolting. So it's sort of the last case. When you do this, you're gonna be able to look through the honeycomb and if you hold it up to the sunlight or a bright light, you should be able to see light passing through those honeycombs. There's definitely like not a lot of light because the honeycombs are extremely tiny, but you should be able to see some light. You may look at it and see it melted or collapsed or um, chunks of the catalytic converter material missing. And certainly any visual difference is a failure of the cat. And the other thing to keep in mind too is either end of the cat could look good and not melted, but it's hottest in the center of the catalytic converter. And so you may have melted or collapsed internals and not really be able to see it from the outside. So just keep in mind that that could be the case. Those are all kind of a nuisance, but look, these cats are extremely expensive. And don't you wanna know for sure that it's bad before you lay out your money to put a new one in? Now, of course, a lot of people will take the cats off and smash out and punch out the honeycomb core. If you do that, a couple of things. Of course, the efficiency of the uh, conversion of the gases to less toxic gases, that will never work again. Your O2 sensors will, sensor two will follow the fluctuation, same as sensor one, and that may trigger emissions codes, and you'll likely never get your car through any kind of like California emission standards. If you don't care about that, your car may constantly have check engine lights on, and you know, it'll may bother you with that sort of thing. Um, but anyway, I know people do it in some states and places around the world, it's illegal to do that, but people do. The other thing that can happen is you can actually cut the cat out, throw it away, and put a straight piece of pipe through there. Okay, so here we are underneath the truck on the passenger side, and the new pipe is starting to be welded in there. And finally, you can replace them with brand new aftermarket or factory original catalytic converters. Some vehicles, it is shocking. I've heard they can be over $1,000 a piece. So I hope this video has been interesting to describe to you all the various ways you can diagnose a faulty catalytic converter, the symptoms, how to diagnose, and how to rectify that situation. If you like my videos and the way I describe things, please subscribe. Good luck.